Moos and thank you so much for joining me back here. Today I want to show you guys all of my school books. I've mentioned this multiple times here on my channel before, but I went to school to be an English major. I have a bachelor's in English, a minor in history, and throughout that time I accumulated a lot of books, a lot of classics. I have some anthologies, and my parents recently came down to visit to see Sam and they brought me all of my school books. So today I'm going to show you all of them. I know a lot of people usually rent their books and I did rent a lot of books throughout college but since I want to be a teacher I decided to buy some of them too. I figured it would be good to have those resources whenever I start teaching my own students so I did buy some of them and I actually bought a lot of them so I'm going to show you all of them today. First up I have The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. This is actually the Old English version. It's big, it's hefty. I will be honest, I had to spark note a lot of the stories because it was just, it took me too long to try to get through the Old English version, so. Satanic Verses, this is not a satanic book at all. I'm a Christian and I understand reading different literature and stuff like that, but I don't think I would have felt comfortable taking a class that involved something like this if it was satanic. This instead was for a class that kind of talked about different cultures and a lot of the other books I talk about will be from that class too but this was just something that kind of explored a different culture than ours. To get to the opera, I took a, a opera class when I was in college. Um, it wasn't for my major, it was like an extra little class but I did get honors credit for it. So yeah, in this class we just watched operas and talked about them. It was pretty chill. Eight Great Comedies. I actually think this is Ethan's book that I took because I needed it for a class so I'm glad to have it back so he can have it back. Disgrace. This is another one of those books that we read for like the culture thing. In this one a professor has like an affair with a student and then ends up moving away because of the affair. So All Alone Together. This is a book that all of the freshmen were expected to read. My college had like an introductory course to kind of teach you what college is like and in that class we had to read this. I don't ever really remember, my coffee pot is done, I don't ever really remember talking about it that much and it was my first semester of college so I don't remember that much about it. Literary Theory by Terry Eagleton. This was like a reference book kind of that I used. I'll be honest, Literary Theory is still one of those things that just over my head. I enjoy it to an extent um, but it, it always confused me and I can never get the different theories straight. I guess that makes me a bad English major. I don't know. Storming Heaven. This is a book I had to read for my West Virginia history class. I am from West Virginia. I went to school in West Virginia. This follows like the struggle of the coal mining industry basically. Um, it follows like the strikes that happen and like it's a it's a fictional book. It's historical fiction. I really enjoyed it. If you're into kind of West Virginia history, Appalachian history, and specifically West Virginia coal mining history, this was good. The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. This was one of my favorite books that I read throughout college, actually. I actually made Ethan read it. He read it during a bad time. I don't think he enjoyed it as much as I do, but he's coming at it from a different pr perspective than I am. I read this for American History, and it follows this group of men after, I think it's the Vietnam War? I'm not entirely sure. I think so. I can't remember, but it follows their different perspectives, how their lives turned out afterwards. It kind of flashes back to what happened to them while they were there. And my favorite thing about this book is the narrator consistently tells you not to trust anything that's in this book. Since so many different things happen to those guys, you know, it's kind of one of those deals. Did it really happen or are they just having this, um, you know, vision, like image in their heads of how it happened? So it's, it's really good if you analyze it from that kind of perspective. The Poetic Edda. This is about Norse mythology. There was a history class that I took um, where we studied the Vikings and so I did a paper on Norse mythology literature and my professor allowed me to do that. You know it wasn't really like a history history type of thing. Since I am an English major I do a lot better with like analyzing literature itself but I kind of compared the actual historical Edda which this is like the actual Norse mythology stories to more modern perceptions of those stories. Um, so yeah, if you're into Norse mythology, this is a good one. Dog Eaters by Jessica Hayes Jordan. This is another one of those books that I read for that culture class. This takes place in the Philippines, I believe. It deals with racism. People use the racist slur dog eater for those in the Philippines. And so this book kind of explores that. The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Again, American literature. This book, um, it was okay. I didn't, it wasn't my favorite, but it was okay. It follows 
this guy who's in love with this girl and they're just friends because she has like another guy and they end up, I think it's Spain with like the bull riding. I don't know. It's a lot. It's okay. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I read this for Brit Lit, British literature. I feel like most people on booktube will know Frankenstein is the doctor. He is not the monster. And this book is not what I expected at all. Same with Dracula. I feel like, I feel like the entertainment industry has just taken Dracula and Frankenstein and just blown them out of proportion in terms of what the actual story came from. Not that it's a bad thing to take that and run with it and be creative with it, but it's not at all what you would expect, I don't think. The Autobiography of My Mother by Kincaid. I took a class on the civil rights era and literature within that era, and this was one of the, the books that I had to read for that class. There will be other bo books that I mentioned. I actually really enjoyed that class. Um, it was really eye-opening, and especially with everything going on right now in the world, this might be something that you want to pick up. And I'll be sure to point out the other books that I read for that class in case you just want more references. So I have some of Shakespeare's history plays. My college required every English major to take a Shakespeare course. And when I needed that course, they were studying the histories. I much would have preferred like the tragedies. I like those a lot better. However, I actually enjoyed this class a lot more than I anticipated. So we read Richard, oh wait, yeah, King Richard II. Henry the Fourth, parts one and two, and then Henry the Fifth. And the way that we studied these, we compared them to Game of Thrones. Um, my teacher, who did the Shakespeare stuff, always tried to kind of make it a little interesting by bringing other stuff into the courses. But these were really good. the The movie that they just came out with, I think it's called The King, um, was based on you know King Henry. So it was interesting to watch. It was interesting to read. If you're into histories and you're into Shakespeare. I think, hmm, I think Henry V was my favorite. Um, King Richard II was okay. It was probably my least favorite. Speaking of Shakespeare, we also read King Lear. This was not for the actual Shakespeare course. This was for world literature, I think, is when I read this book. This is one of Shakespeare's more popular plays, but it's not too long if you're wanting to read something by him. Let's talk about some anthologies. So I did not buy all of my anthologies because um, I didn't decide that I wanted to keep them and use them until later on in my college career, I guess you could say. But I do think I have all of the American literature ones. I do. They're not in order right now, but I'm not going to worry about it. These things are huge. They're honking. But American literature was my favorite in college. I like British literature, but I much prefer American literature for some reason. So yeah, I have all of the anthologies for that. And then some British literature anthologies. Again, they're huge. So in my college, you had to have two American literature classes and three British literature classes. I don't think I bought my books for the first Brit Lit class, um, but I did buy them for the second two. So here they are. British literature anthologies. So I have a New England Nun and other stories by Mary E. Wilkins Freeman. I did a paper on her and her works. So I have this. This is good. Um, American literature, if you're into American literature, if I remember correctly, um, there's like some feminism stuff within her stories. I don't remember exactly. This was a couple years ago now. So, but American literature. Analyzing English grammar. You know, you have to take grammar courses when you study English. Not enthusiastic about it, but I do have a textbook on grammar. Kane, this is another one of those books that I read for the Civil Rights Era class. This is about black life in the South, and it kind of talks about, um, like, perceptions of race and stuff like that in the South. The Prose Edit, this is the other book I used for that Viking class. It wasn't a class on Vikings, we just studied the Vikings in that class. But this is the book I used for that paper, where I kind of compared... I used both of these and kind of compared them, so. Poetry from the Masters, again, the Civil Rights Era class. This is about black arts movement, so it talks about the impact of African-American literature in America. Tales of the City by Armistead Maupin. I had a class, it was a mini course, on just these three books. This is the first three in the series. I think there's eight or nine, but we only read the first three. If you're into queer literature, this is the book for you. This talks about a girl who moves to San Francisco and she becomes friends with this different dynamic group of people. And within this group, you do have a gay man. And it kind of explores, you know, the struggles that he had to go through at that time in San Francisco. This was about the time of the AIDS epidemic in San Francisco. And so you kind of see some of that too. I won't give spoilers. I'll just say that that is incorporated within this book. 
He also struggles with how to tell his family, that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for something like that, this is a whole series. The Last of the Mohicans by James Cooper. Again, I read this for American Literature. It wasn't bad. It wasn't one of my favorites from American Literature. I much prefer the later stuff in American Literature. And we read this for the first class. So they were broken up by time periods. We read this for the early American Literature. It was okay. It's still a well-known classic though. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Stowe. Again, American Literature, the early class. This one was good. I preferred this one to The Last of the Mohicans. This book is about a slave named Tom, and he's kind of sold and sent to the South and it explores his journey there, his mistreatment there. So, Passing by Nella Larson. This is a book, again, from the Civil Rights class. This book is about how black people can sometimes pass for white. And so in this book, there is a black woman who passes for white and her husband doesn't even know that she's black, which causes problems because it's during a racist time. Civil rights era is very racist time in a racist society, and people within the black community look at this woman and kind of just have disdain for her, for what she's doing, for kind of hiding her true identity. But she feels like she has to, to make it in society. So if you're looking for something like that, it's a quick read and it was pretty good. Shakespeare, a graphic guide. I had to have this for my Shakespeare class. It just talks about the history of Shakespeare in an interesting way. It's got pictures and stuff to kind of make it more interesting and not so boring. Petals of Blood. I'm not going to try to pronounce the author's name. I still can't do it even after taking the class. This wasn't for the civil rights class. This was for the culture class. This is like a murder mystery book. So three African directors are murdered within this book and it follows the investigation. West Virginia a History. Again, I had this from my West Virginia class. It's just the history of West Virginia. I have the MLA guide manual thing because you write in MLA when you do English classes. This is useless now. Um, I guess it won't be when I start teaching, but education classes at the graduate level use APA, so I had to buy a whole new book for that. And just speaking of that, I'm not going to talk about my graduate level courses. I got my bachelor's in English and I am currently getting my master's in teaching. I'm not going to talk about the master's in teaching books. This is just for my English degree and my history minor. So Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Everybody knows Jane Eyre. It's great. It's popular. I'm not going to spend much time talking about it. Byzantium. This is a book I had to read for a history class. It was actually the same class that we talked about Vikings and stuff in. This is about med medieval history. I'm talking too fast today. Um, it was kind of boring if I'm being honest with you. If you want to read about medieval history, maybe pick up a different one. The Historical Atlas of West Virginia. Again, um, West Virginia history. So it has like a bunch of maps and stuff about the different things. <laughs> yeah, that's very descriptive, huh? Um, we use this book mostly to look at political stuff. Um, like the different boundaries and stuff during the Civil War. We looked at how different areas of West Virginia voted and stuff like that, but it does have a lot more in there if you're interested. Maybe some of you are from West Virginia. I don't know. Worlds Together, World Apart. This is a history book for world history. Um, this is beginning through the 15th century, so it just has history from all over the world since it is world history. How about that? Cultural Atlas of the Viking World. This again is what I used for my Viking paper. You can see I have, um, they're not even tabs. They're sticky notes that I just tore into so I could use my notes. But I did use this to bring in some cultural, factual information about the Vikings when I wrote my paper about their literature. So the works of Anne Bradstreet. Anne Bradstreet is an American poet. Um, she was one of the first female poets that I remember talking about in American literature, and I really enjoyed her poetry. I'm usually not much of a poetry person, let me just say that, but I did write a paper on her, and so I bought a book of just all of her works, most of her works at least. The Oristaya, this is a popular classic, I guess you could say. It's a collection of three works. The most popular would be Ag Agamemnon. I have a collection of John Donne's poetry. I actually enjoy his poetry as well. I think he's a Brit Lit poet, if I remember correctly. Again, I'm not much of a poetry person. I do like Donne's poetry though. A lot of it is um, spiritual poetry, I guess you would call it. Or at least you could read it that way. You can see I have a bunch of notes for one of them. Um, just written all over the page. I know some people don't like to do that. What I find when I write papers that it's a lot easier 
to annotate when I read the poems, um, especially if I'm writing a paper on it. So, oh, I found another American literature anthology. So, there's a ton of American literature ones, I guess. Sinner's Welcome by Mary Carr. This is a poetry book too. I think this is her poetry book. Yes. Um, so I took a class on memoir. It was another mini course, and we talked all about Mary Carr's works. And this book specifically kind of talks about her life through poetry. Um, it's called An Essay on Poetry and Faith. So there are some poems in here that talk about her faith, how she came to find faith, um, what her faith looks like to her. I did write a paper for this class, but I don't think I actually used this. No, for this class, I wrote a paper called Why Am I the Way That I Am? And I quoted Michael Scott in my paper, the part where he looks at Toby and he's like, why are you the way that you are? But I did quote that. I talked about why I am the way that I am. What made me me? Because I feel like that's a lot of what memoir is. It's just self-reflection. Um, and my professor was completely okay with that. So it was a lot of fun. If you've never done something like that, I highly recommend it. This is kind of just a tangent. But really sitting down and looking at myself and self-reflecting taught me a lot about myself. I know that sounds cliche, but I realized that a lot of the characteristics that I have come from my dad. A lot of the way that I am comes from my childhood with him. My parents were divorced growing up and they had this agreement that my brother and I could stay with whoever we wanted to stay. So I chose to live with my dad and my brother chose to live with my mom. And I realized that a lot of who I am comes from the fact that I did live with my dad and his personality and how it affected me. So that paper was just really eye-opening for myself. I highly suggest it. Even if you don't write a paper, just sit down and think about it. Cherry by Mary Cara. This again was for the memoir class. This was an actual memoir. This isn't a book of poems. This talks about her adolescent life, so when she was actually a little girl. Um, there was another book, I think the professor said, that talks about her life when she gets a little bit older. We didn't read that one. We just read this one. The Narrative of William W. Brown, A Fugitive Slave. This was another one of those books that we read for the Civil Rights Era class. Tis Pity She's a War by John Ford. This is a play. We had a class all on John Ford. This book is a whirlwind, let me tell you. This book, this play, deals with incestual relationships. Um, so this girl is in love with her brother. But her dad doesn't know that and is trying to force her to marry someone else. So she has, I think it's two different quarters who want to marry her, but she doesn't want to marry them, obviously. And so just a bunch of stuff happens. It's a tragedy. I'll just say that. I would definitely consider this a tragedy. And the last book is one of the most boring books and I maybe should not have left it for last. But it is Critical Theory since 1965. If you're an English major and you are looking for some help on critical theory, literary cr criticism, I guess this book is for you. That or the other one that I talked about. Again, I am not a good English major when it comes to literary theory. I'm just not. I don't get it. My favorite literary theory is new criticism, where you look just at the text and nothing else. And that's not really acknowledged anymore. People don't acknowledge new criticism. So. I'm just not in the loop. So yeah, those are all of the books that I own from my time as an undergraduate student at college seeking a English degree, an English degree. I say a English degree like I am not an English major. Anyways, and I wasn't a very good one. Just throwing that in there. I enjoy literature. Um, I don't like grammar. And I can't say that I really enjoyed writing papers. I just want to read. That's it. I feel like that's why most people become an English major that like to read. So yeah, I do have a, quite a big selection of books. I honestly don't know where they're going to fit. So they have to go on this bookshelf. And I don't know that I have room, so we'll see. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know down below what your major is. Are you in college? Or are you still in high school? What do you plan to do? I'm always anxious. I'm always curious. Let me know if you've read any of these books. I feel like probably the most read book that I have in this list would be Jane Eyre. I feel like a lot of people will have read Jane Eyre. But if you've read anything else, let me know too. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. You are awesome. I'm thankful for you. And we'll meet back here next time, guys. See ya. Sam is napping, by the way. Look at how cute he is. Sometimes I have to look really close just to make sure he's still breathing. It scares me sometimes, but he's alive. <laughs>